Welcome to People Love Process. This is going to be our third episode of Over the Shoulder Vector Building, uh, the series that I'm now doing via my People Love Process channel. And again, unlike most of my content on People of Process, I produce this series in a raw format. And for this episode, I'm going to take a rough sketch and bring it to life in Adobe Illustrator. Now, this rough sketch that you see in front of you, um, I scribbled out why I was working on thumbnail sketches uh, for concepts for a kind of a unique brand identity that I've never done before. And that is I'm working with a client who sold his marketing business just north of me up in the Portland, Oregon area. And he's now having a custom catamaran built for himself. Now he has a name for um, his boat and that's what I'm branding for him of all things. I've never done that before it's kind of a challenge because he doesn't want anything distinctly nautical about the design so that's making it kind of difficult to play off of what his name is and pull it off but that's the challenge of working on projects like this um, anytime that I approach something I've never done before, there's an element of fear. So I'll just say fear is a natural part of the creative process. Don't fight it. Uh, just realize it and deal with it uh, accordingly. Don't let it stop you uh, from trying things, but definitely realize it's part of the creative process. So uh, that's normal. Uh, but I really like this doodle I did and it had nothing to do with the project I was working on. I, I was actually, I was working out some wings. You can see down here, I was working on one concept with a wing and I started drawing out a wing. I go, oh, kind of like that. And then I, I started drawing down the, the right side and I'm going, God, it's almost like a bird, but I didn't create a bird head. I just created a one eye. So I don't even know what it is, but I liked it, um, posted it. And I usually post doodles like that on Instagram. And somebody says, uh, you should, I want to see it built out. So that's what we're going to do. Now, even on something this rough, I'm not really going to redraw it because this is going to be a lot of geometric shapes we're going to be using. So I just scan this in with my flatbed scanner, bring it into Photoshop just to clean it up a bit. And that's all I did here. So it's not a new sketch. It's the exact same sketch. I just cleaned it up and clarified it, made it straight so I can uh, use it as a guide to build from, but it's not going to be dead on accurate to what you see here. But again, when I do this, I'm just going to go ahead and just knock this back to 20% so we can see it, lock the layer. I dropped a guide in here because again, this is going to be uh, symmetrically building. And once again, on my graphic styles, I like having a one point, a 0 0.75, a 0 0.5, 0 0.25. And then I also have, um, this is a dotted line and this is a dash line just because it gives me a starting point now and I don't have to recreate the wheel. So this is all part of my new document, um, uh, a, a new document profile. So every time I go command N, create a new document, all these colors are in here. Um, all these uh, graphic styles are in here. So it, it's, it's kind of nice uh, having that. So we're going to build this out. And on this one, I guess this, I guess the side I'll start with is I'll build out the right side. Um, you could do either side, doesn't really matter, but I think that's going to probably work best. Um, so I always start with one of these sizes. So I'll go 0.75 here and I want to establish what thickness we're going to have on this top edge of the wing. I think that's going to look fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and this is where I'll use a rounding tool. Now I'm using a plugin, but if you want to use, um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's fine, but I'm going to make this thicker like that. Yeah, that looks better. Then I'm going to make a clone. I'm going to go to the rounding tool. Once again, I'm using a rounding tool. If you want to use the corner widget, you can. You just have to select the anchor and then round it because that's all I'm going to do. Um, I just prefer using the, uh, the rounding uh, dynamic corners by Astute Graphics like that. 
Then I'm going to bring this up and determine the size like this. Then I'm slide it over. And that's how I'm going to create the curve on the top. Something like that. We'll select this. Go to Pathfinder minus front. Once I have that, then I can round this. But I think that's too sharp. So what I like to do, and this is a little unorthodox, is I'll point this out like this, then I'll round it, and you get a blunter curve, but it still transitions into the straight. So I think that just looks a little more natural. This, we're gonna bring all the way over here. Go like that. Then maybe something like this. Going to work on this part here. Again, because my drawing isn't perfect, it doesn't need to be. I'm using perfect tools. Something like that. I think what I'm going to do here, though, is knowing that I'm going to have this come to an end like that. So I'll select this. I'll unite it. This is where I'll direct select the anchors I don't want here. All these. And I'll just use the move anchor point. Since they're on straight lines, um, it's not going to distort. I never use... Uh, like if I select something, I never use this on a curve because it'll ruin the graphic because um, Illustrator still doesn't have smart um, remove on the desktop. They have it in their iPad app, but I don't know. Still haven't gotten around to putting in here. And this is where I'll go back and I'll add these curves in. Once again, you can use uh, the corner widget in Illustrator but I just prefer using the plugin, so I get, I think that's looking pretty good. And then I think to help with the next part of the wing, I'll go offset. And I'll just figure out 10 is not bad. I'm gonna try 12. I think that looks better, like that. And then, even though this is my sketch curved, I think it looks better having it curved. Then I'll select these anchor points. And this is where having Smart Guides turned on because we want to drag this guide all the way up this path. So it's just following. Oops. Let me reselect these. With them selected, just making sure it follows right up. Ah, what am I doing? It's easier if you zoom in. So let's go ahead and zoom in. There we go. Like this. And we'll just... Fine. I... Something like... Oops. I don't know why I keep doing that. Let's just do this. We'll just make a copy and I'll drag it up. Something like that. Let's zoom out. Okay. This is another thing about Illustrator I've noticed is over the years, it's become progressively harder to select things unless you're super zoomed in, which is kind of, what's what's the point? Why, why make it so hard? You know, like that. Like this, we'll take these. This is where the creative process gets a little sloppy. That's okay. And I'll take these.
doesn't matter what it looks like over here. Take these like that. And I know this is looking really kind of sloppy. That's okay. It's going to lead to, actually, we'll just remove those. We don't need them. This, and this is another thing I use all the time where I can just retract the handles. So I do that, and that's part of that Passcribe uh, panel that shows up. Get rid of that. I don't know exactly where this base is going to be, so I'm just going to clean this up by just creating two throwaway shapes, fuse them, selecting this, and trimming. Oops. Okay, fine. Be obstinate like that. Bring this to the front. Select these two. Trim it. So now we have this inside shape. Now, anytime I have extra anchors, it's on a straight, so I'll just use that to remove it. So now I, I want to figure out the balance here. And the reason why I didn't want to define the in because um, it might change as I'm creating this. So this is where I'll go like this. I'm thinking something like that. Then I'll clone that, bring it down, establish that negative space in between. Actually, now that I think about this, it should be the same tolerance, 12. There we go, like that. And then I'll put the third one in like that. Okay, you can see it drops lower, so I'm glad I did that. Um, now I can take this, and on this, I'll just move this up to snap to that bottom. And then I'm gonna take this and trim this shape like that. So we've created these insets here. And then on all of these shapes, we'll select them, select this, we'll go unite like that. This is where I'll use the corner widget to add those rounds in here. Again, I'm not completely sure yet, so let's define the angle. Go like this. Define that angle. And I think on all of these, I want these to come out. So I'm going to do the same type of rounding where I just think it'll look nicer. It won't be as dagger sharp like that. And this one I think looks better being out further. I might come back and shorten that. We'll, we'll just keep kind of progressing forward until I figure that part out. Let's go ahead and work on the eye. So find the center, create that. Clone it, Command-C, Command-F. Create the pupil. I think what I want to do is I want to I might make this bigger. Lift that up. I might make it smaller. Something like that. And then creating the outer profile of the eye. Something like that. Copy it. Command C, Command F. I hit the F3 key. Like that. I think I'm going to move this down. Let's see. This is going to be black. This can be white. Do 
I want to have, hmm, I think this, I'll go ahead and just create it. I don't know if I'll keep it that thickness, but it'll be something like that because I need to define the edge of this inner part of the eye. And I think I want this black to go into it because if this is going to be white and it hits white down the inner part of the eye, I don't know if I want to color this or leave it white. And there needs to be something to define that edge. So I'll go ahead and clone this. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Take this shape, bring it to the front, select that. And that'll be the shadowing on the top part. Then the light's coming straight down, so we'll make this the highlight. By the way, I've been working this way so long where I just focus on shape and form that I'm not even thinking about color at this point. Um, I'm not completely sure, but so what I do when I'm not sure about something is I'll, I'll take all these shapes for the eyes and I'll go command C command F which is just the F3 key I'll group it and this is where I'll move it to the X layer just in case I want to come back to it then I'll take these I'll intersect them and you know you, there's all these reels that I see on like Instagram mainly I don't really use TikTok and they show these people doing these little tips and tricks in Illustrator. And one of them they saw the other day is, look, you don't have to, you don't have to commit to something. You hold option down, use a pathfinder, you know, and well, I'll just show you. Let's just create this. Let's say you have this and let's say you're, you're doing some logo and you come up with the idea of the star or whatever. Well, you can take this and let's say this is blue and you want this white you know so you're doing something like this let's say and we'll go ahead we'll zoom in on this so you can see it a little more so let's say you have this one we'll move it over we'll make a copy and this is going to be the brand mark for whatever it is this is just a quick and dirty example you can take this and they say don't do this that's the wrong way they say you know hold this hold this hold option down then do that um and you get the same thing but your artwork is still is still there because that will allow you to go in here and then you can reposition it over here and stuff that's not a bad way to work if you're developing something, but they make it sound like you leave your final brand asset that way. And what it also shows me is most users noodle in Illustrator. Instead of defining a direction, figuring out your concept before you jump on the box, they noodle around in Illustrator. Not that you're not going to improve something as you start building it. You should always do that. But you should have your idea locked in before you jump into Illustrator and like play around to try to find a solution. Um, I just find those, I mean, some of them, are, they're okay, but most of them are like, really? That's, you know, you shouldn't even be building it if you don't know that that's what you need to build. It's like me coming in here without any idea what I want to create and then trying to find the idea in Illustrator. I just think it's the wrong headed way to approach the creative process. There, that's my rant. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and go back here. This way I save stuff. I'll go back, I'll copy this one, and I'll go back here and I'll paste it because it's easier to get that curve that I ultimately want. By the way, um, we're gonna, let's try this tolerance we have here. So I'm gonna take this and go offset. Should be the same 12 like that. And so I just wanna match that so this edge goes right there it's not going to make that noise that's just me making that noise so it goes right about here now it would be cool if there's a way you could do that and uh astute has a plugin let's see do i have it installed i don't know if i have this one installed oh i do okay so snap to well let's just pull this out here 
These are called Collider Scribe. And what's kind of cool is I can take, um, well, let, let's first approach it this way. I would first eyeball it as close as I could get, like something right around there, okay? Make sure it's the same size like that. Then I'd drag it away. It's still in the center. That's what I want. But then I'd use Snap to Collision Tool. What does this do? Well, if you have this tool selected, it's called Collider Scribe by Astute Graphics. It's one of their plugins. If I select this and start moving it up, notice it's going to snap. You see the node to the right there, the magenta node? That means that's where it collides. So that's perfectly registered. I don't have to worry about guessing it anymore. And that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, that is actually a very cool feature. So um, that's going to help build. So what I can do is I can actually, let's go ahead, we'll go like this. I'm going to just make a throwaway shape like that. Click. Click on that and go like that. So we have this edge. I'll bring this over like this now. So I was just doing that to get this part. We can get rid of these. We don't need those. And I might put an anchor here. Then this slide it on with smart guides down here just so it goes over that base shape. Get rid of that anchor. All we're doing is making a tangent from this and this, but this tangent, um, this is where I would select this and I'd go unite. So now it goes from that nice curve right into a straight boom, right down into there. So I think that's kind of cool. And I don't know exactly where I want this bottom. So we're going to trim this off with the shape and then right where it divides, we'll take those two. And we'll trim this, all that, because ultimately we'll reflect it over. And we just wanted to get that. I don't want that anchor being right on that path. So this is where I'll just do that. Select this one, get rid of it. That way, when it overlaps, um, oh, I just noticed something there like that. Then I can go ahead and unite those now. I can take this, slide this up on the path until it gets to about where the round is going to be, right about there. Direct select these, use the corner widget, put the nice curve into that. So we have that part. Now what we have to do is the body. This can be super easy because we'll just go from the center, go down here. And that seems about the right angle. Might go a little deeper on this, something like that. Then we can select these, unite them, go back to the dynamic corners. I'll add a nice round there just so it kind of fuses with the body shape. That looks good. Uh, these claws, these might be intimidating, but Again, think in shapes, like this is a crude drawing. So what I'm going to do first, and this is where if you don't have a plugin, use a square. Think of what I'm doing now, but just think in a square because then you can use the corner widget to do all your rounding. I'm starting with the circle because I can use a circle to do this, meaning I can go to the dynamic corners and create these shapes kind of like this. Then I can direct select these, drag it over. I think this needs to get a little smaller. Like that. Make a clone. Then I'm going to create the inner shape. I think I want it about that thickness, but we want that curve smaller so it makes a nice talon shape, kind of like that. So this is sitting on top, so if I color it with the fill, you can see it's on top. 
I'll select this and I'll minus front. So we have a talent established. Now I'll make a copy of this and I usually just move it across like this because what I want to do is even though my drawing has this kind of going like this, I'm going to make a copy of this. We'll flip it around, reflect it like that. I'm going to figure out the angle. It's close, something like this. So I'm not sizing it because I want all these talons to be the same size. Like this. This is essentially his front part of his claw and the back talon. So this back talon, you know, in this case, I might actually move this up a little bit. I think that'll work better. Go like that. Now... To move something on the same angle like this, if you don't have a plugin, you can just add an anchor point, select these, slide it with Smart Guides turned on until you get to that anchor, and then it'll snap. And then it'll stay at the right angle and you won't distort your art. Then you can remove it if it's on a straight line. So that's how I do that. It's super easy. Now, on this one, I want his leg um, thicker. So I'm going to copy of this, bring it up here, determine about that thick. So because his talons aren't as thick as the leg that has them. So we'll go like this. Then I'll just create this to trim this shape like that. So that'll work. And then what I want to do is I'll just take this, reflect it, get it going the right way. And figure out the angle. Let's say we'll go to snap to this one. Like that, I think looks good. I'll move it closer. I want to get it too close. I want some nice negative space there, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone both of these because I want to snap this like this. And then I'm going to rotate off of that and then go until it snaps with this one. Now, the reason why I did that is I want to get the exact same spacing on this top one. So you can see my drawing had it further back, but this actually makes it uh, the exact same negative space as this one. And I kind of like that better, I think. We'll, we'll test it. So I'll go like this, then I'll slide this down. And this a little high, so. Then I'll remove that. Sometimes it's hard to tell with shapes, so this is where I will go back and I'll fill all these with black just to look at the overall shape. And this might look better back. And then... Sometimes it's just easier to, and like that. Okay, I moved it too far, so let's just go down a little. This is where it's hard sometimes to do it at a certain zoom ratio. It's easier to zoom in, and then you can get a smaller increment of movement without it snapping, especially with smart guides on. I think that looks better. I think that's going to work for his claw. Maybe his back claw is too, too far, far like this. And I think when I round it, I'll round this 
where it comes to a point here, so it just kind of transitions into the, the other one nicely. That said, now that I'm looking at this, well, again, this is where <laughs> I'll take this, I'll clone it, I'll group it, and then we'll go to layers and I'll move it to my vector junk drawer because I'm not sure yet, so I don't want to commit to it. But on this, I'm going to go ahead and unite all these, but I'm not done. I just want to try some because I, I don't really like this angle. And I wonder if there's a better way to handle this. So I'm going to go like this and... And this is the type of exploration I do in the midst of creating something. If something's not feeling right, it's like I feel obligated to kind of figure out why. So I'm going to snap it to that inner edge. Then I'm going to go so it hits the top edge. Then I'll move this over like this. And even though this isn't going to be the exact same diameter, that's okay. I'll get it close. I think this is going to work better. So I'm going to go like this. Select this. Go to the dynamic corners. I'm going to, it doesn't matter down there. Take this. And we'll go, I'm looking for Pathfinder minus front. I kind of like it, but then this looks too thin now. So this is where I have to think about it. And so I think... The way I can solve that is this is the thickness I want. Let's go ahead and sample this so we can see it. By the way, when you're zoomed in like this, this is way too thick. So let's go 0.25. It's easier like that. Then I'll snap this to that anchor point just to make sure I'm on the right angle, move that away, move it up. Okay, there we go. So the reason why it's not looking right is you can see there's not enough um, volume here to match the aesthetic. So I think what I need to do is to match that. I'm just going to bring this up as a guide like this. I'm going to try something, and that is I'm basically just going back to what I had now that I'm thinking about it. I have to think about this. Give me one second. This is where I literally just kind of look at it and think, okay, how do I resolve this? And I think, I don't know, this might work, this might not work, so we'll see. I'm going to try something. I'll go like this. Some of you are probably watching this just, won't you do this, do this, do this. Okay. I'll get rid of that. I don't think this is going to work. I thought maybe. No. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All that for nothing. So, yeah, I'm not liking that. So I'm just going to delete that. It's not even worth keeping. I'm going to go back to what I had, copy it, 
and paste it back in place. And I think what I'm going to do is what I was originally going to do. Okay, we'll just keep all that. We'll go ahead and, well, this is a good point. This is at a point where I have all this built, so I'll just select all this. I'll clone it, group it, and I'll just put it in my build process, my vector junk drawer. But on this one, I'll go ahead and unite it. And this is where I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up and we're going to use that reposition anchor point tool plugin to this tangent like that. And we're going to just round this and see what this looks like. You know, maybe it's just just I maybe it's just bugging me and it shouldn't bug me. I'm gonna keep moving forward. I might come back to that. I'm not sure. I can't I can't make up my mind. And I don't wanna keep harping on it, but that that literally is kind of what I do is I just try to stare at it and figure out, okay, why is it not working? Should I do this? I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna use the same tolerance we used. Uh, offset 12 points like that. Just get the base of the crown so the gaps are pretty much all the same in the detailing. And this is probably the easiest thing of this design to create is we'll go here and we're going to go all the way down here like this. The crown like that. Select this. Make sure it's on top. Select this shape. Minus front. Now I did this so when it overlaps, we're kind of jumping ahead here because I'll just go to the reflect tool, find a central anchor point, reflect it. I just did that so it had overlap so it would uh, fuse together nicely. So we'll just go ahead and commit to the crown. That's fine. Uh, these are super simple to build. These are just the scallop shapes. So again, if you're working without a plug-in like dynamic uh, corners from Astute Graphics, start with the square instead of a circle, then use the corner widget, and then you can round off the bottom. In this case, I start with the circle and I just turn the top corners back to squares using dynamic corners. Let's go ahead and cut this. I'll go to the scissor tool. Use scissor tool a lot more back in the day before the shape building tool. So shape building tools, uh, one of the better features they've added over the years. And then like that. And we can take a copy of these two. So pretty easy to make scallops like that. We might size this overall down a bit like this. And then we'll figure out, um, I think it'll look good to match this. So let's zoom in a bit. We can turn that off. I'm going to snap to this anchor here. Then select these anchors, snap it up here, just to get the width of what will be black here. So this is 3.581 points tall, and that's what I work in is points. It's easier in inches because it's whole numbers. And we're going to go to stroke. We'll just punch that in here. And that way, I think this detailing will match this part of the eye. And that kind of continuity really kind of ties a design together really well. Let's focus on the tail here. So you see we have this angle. I'm going to copy this shape, and I'm just going to reflect it down like this. Um, we don't need that. The only reason I did that is I wanted to get that angle 
on the bottom here. So I'll create a throwaway shape, intersect it. And I did that just to get the angle. I want it to be the exact same angle that we're going to now use on uh, the tail of this character. It, it, it has bird features, but it's not a bird. I don't know. Maybe it's a watcher or something like that. We'll get rid of that anchor like that. We'll add an anchor point in here. This one, we'll put it right about there. And maybe about that wide. Here, we'll go to Object, Offset. And it'll do the 12 point gap we're doing. That's a pretty big tail. Let's think we're going to make this a little beefier like that. Then we'll redo that offset. That's going to get too narrow. What? What? Are yeah, that'd get, okay. Maybe it was right the first way at it. Let's go back to what we had. It would get too narrow at the base of the, the tail. And we'll go offset path. Yeah, that'll look good. I had it right the first time, so. Uh, but it establishes this angle now. So all we have to do is snap to our path already like that. So we get that part of the tail. We can get rid of that. This will be fine because we're going to bring these anchor points down and make kind of that curve. Let's just go ahead and create the... Maybe it should go longer. Kind of like... We'll do something like that. And I think on this, it just needs to go up a little bit. Oops, I screwed up that angle. So let's do this. Let's go up like this. And then I can go ahead and create a throwaway shape to trim off the center. That looks good. So we almost have all of our content built like that. This, we can save that in the vector junk drawer. Move it up into there. We'll do that with the tail. We'll do that with uh, the feathers on the chest. Okay, to crappie. Drag those up. Okay. Let's go ahead and select the body, select the tail. We'll select the, uh, the claw and the leg. We'll unite all those together. This is where I want, let's see, I want the same angle. So I'm going to create a throwaway shape here like that. And then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to put it right about, no. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make this straight there. There we go. Select this, unite it. There we go. Now I can select this, use the corner widget to get that nice gap in there. This, we could handle two ways, select these and do that kind of rounding, which I think looks pretty good. Do the same thing up here, select both of them, corner widget, boom. That way it just, uh, that looks really good actually. It's nice and fluid. I kind of like that. Okay. Uh, then I'll use the dynamic corners because I think this would look good having a flare like this. Now, ultimately, we'll come back and we'll put subtle rounds on these points, I don't, especially on the, the wing, etc. Now, I'm looking at this, and I kind of like this being out because um, wings are, are pretty big. And we might even actually come back to this and do something like this where we... Um, move them out even further. I'm not sure yet. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and take this, copy it, Command C, Command F, go to the Reflect tool, find a central anchor point. We'll use the anchor in the crown, reflect it over. Now, this is where I like to double click, go into isolation mode, put an anchor right in the middle and just drag it over so it purposely overlaps a little more and then unite it and then I check. And notice when you do this kind of building, you're gonna have these redundant anchor points. And so right now it's we have not a lot of anchor points, 154. So we're gonna click this and we had four redundant anchor points through the design. So it removes all that nice, clean, efficient artwork. And this is where I think I'll turn off the sketch because we've used that to build to this point. And I think what I wanna focus on now is kind of, um, we'll go ahead and we'll go black fill on this body like that. We'll even do a black fill on the crown select it, select everything else, paste behind, bring those to the top. We'll take this, this is gonna be white, so no outline, just white, like this. Oh, looks like I got some, take those shapes, copy it, select all these, paste behind, like that. Now we have the hierarchy correct, I'm pretty sure. And we'll take this, Bring it to the front, select this. So this is just a giant uh, thin donut like that, but we don't want it blue, we want it black. This will ultimately be black. This will be black. This will be white, something like that. Once we combine these, I'll round this so it'll transition from this curve uh, into the shape of the eye better. Um, I actually think this might look a little better if we move it down further like that. Yeah, I like that more. Do I? I think I do. Well, it'd be easy enough to go back and fix. I, you know, maybe just one yeah, just one nudge down. I think that'll work good. So I want it to work really well in one color. And right now I'm just mocking it up. I'm not committing to every, anything yet. Now these are all strokes, but again, you can see how it matches the eye, which are the only two thin line uh, parts in this. So we'll have to go to object, path, and go outline stroke. And then we can go to unite like that. And these can be white as well. So that looks uh, pretty good. And I might even thicken these up a bit. Let's put a stroke around it, see what that looks like. Ooh, I think I like that better. Because since it's white, you're running into that iridation problem where white objects on a dark background look um, thinner even though they're the exact same size, uh, visually speaking, it's gonna match the black, even though it's technically a little larger. Now, because it's an outline, I'm gonna have to um, outline the stroke. So it turns it into a shape and then just click Unite. And now it's back to just a fill of white, no stroke. Like that, I think that looks great. We're gonna go ahead and commit to this. So what I'm gonna do first is is I'm going to go ahead and just minus front that from the eye take that shape go back to this and the pupil and go command B paste behind because these two shapes will unite and it'll punch out of the inner shape the eye, which is white. Then I'll take this and I'll go to my uh, dynamic corners and I'm gonna pull this out just to make that transition from that shadow area into the eye. And I think it just looks better. It might even look better larger. Let's try it larger. Hmm, we'll, we'll see, maybe. 
Let's see. Do I? Nah, that's too much. Okay. Um, I think on the instead of using true radius, we're going to use standard. What standard does is it takes the angle here and the angle here, and it takes that into consideration. Um, so instead of just being a perfect circle, it it balances those angles when you create a curve from it. And then we'll over here. Oh yeah, I like that better. Then I'll go back to true radius because I think on these I'm going to put a small rounding on those, a subtle round if you will, like that. And I'm going to come into here and I'm going to put a subtle round on all of these sharp vertices, the corners of these shapes. Actually on these I might go fatter. like that. And then I want to match these on these. I don't want these to be perfect. So this is why I love using this plugin because I can just go in on these shapes and just apply that rounding to other anchor points like this. And it, it definitely is the true definition is subtle. Um, now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that black needs to be even wider. So at least it's easy if you've already committed in this case. So I'm just going to go here, go back to my graphic styles. And because it's a circle, I just find an anchor point here, snap to it. Then I can just scale it till it snaps over here. And I think this is going to look better if we make it even thicker. It won't match the won't match these but we might end up changing those anyway so i'll take this and i'll just go pathfinder where did i put it there it is minus front ah so this isn't if we go to here it'll just be a group we need to have it as a compound or it'll lose content why they can't just make that default to always be compound i think that's going to look better oh yeah that looks way better yeah, and this doesn't bother me not being exactly identical to that either. So I'm just going to leave it. That looks that looks pretty good. Now, I do want to take the same tolerances I used down here, which are pretty minor, and bring them back into these points of the eye. Like that. That looks really cool. Okay. Let's transition some of those uh, subtle rounds. We're going to put it on the crown because the crown is, of all things, really pointed. And it doesn't need to be. So we'll just put nice little subtle rounds there, especially on the inside detail that could round. We'll put a subtle round there and there, there. And where it comes to tip over here, go over here and do the same. And apply those subtle rounds on these. And that's one feature I like about dynamic corners is you can just click on something and it applies that round. We'll do the same thing on the talons because, yes, talons are dagger sharp, but on a vector design, which is known for flat, sharp surfaces, um, it kind of looks more custom when you take the time to add this kind of detailing, this kind of rounding. And by the way, to move around, just hold the um, space bar down. You get the hand tool, and then you can just move around. It's easier than scrolling. Uh, we're going to go here, and I'm going to add the, some subtle rounds here, too. Not big ones, because I think it'll just look better like that. And I think we're pretty much pretty much done with this. I kind of like this design. Um, what is it? I have no idea. And uh, by the way, I haven't saved this whole time. So just because I don't want to have to rebuild it if it crashes, I'm going to save now. So we're going to do a command S. It'll save really quickly. But this is at the point where I would do some color exploration. There's a lot of things you could you could do with this. If we go over here, I could see this as being purple maybe this is some kind of gold color 
like that, that'd be kind of even a darker purple. That's more of a violet. Let's go, let's go crazy with it. So we'll add more red and we'll add more black to make it darker. Oh yeah, see that looks, that looks pretty cool. Maybe the eye, you know, you could do something like this. You could even take this and instead of being distinct white, you could make it purple, go to color, and because we have a global color, we can turn this into a tint. So we could make this maybe 35%. Nah, it'd look better darker, maybe 70. Uh, too dark, 50. You could make it more subtle like that. So it's a, it's a hint of that type of thing. I, am, I almost like it better, just more distinct with white, though. I think it, it looks cooler. So I'm not sure what I'll, well, I'll do with this, but um, I might turn it into a T-shirt. I might do other color exploration. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's just go ahead. We'll go ahead and go duplicate. And then I'm going to go color exploration like that. Now, right now we have a purple, so we'll just size this down for the color exploration part. We'll put it here. We'll make a copy, make a copy again. So all we're going to do is we're going to explore different colors. So maybe Maybe on this, maybe it's like a dark gray. Ooh, that looks kind of cool, but not gold. Let's do it. Um, yellow, maybe? No. What goes good with dark gray? Green? That doesn't look bad either. It's a simple design, so I don't want to put a ton of color in it. Maybe we do a dark red. Ooh, I think I'm going to like this, but that's, we would need it to be a lot darker. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Make sure to turn it into a global color. That actually looks good with gold. This gold, let's modify a new gold. We're going to add more yellow into it get rid of some of that blue make it a little brighter ooh i like that maybe we go dark blue instead of gold let's go with like a silver kind of color Ooh, maybe even darker blue. I think this needs to be darker gray. See what I'm talking about? It's it's hard at times, unless you zoom in, then you can select. You'll want to try to select other shapes. It, it's it's really kind of frustrating. I wish they would improve that because it, now that I'm looking at this, I don't know if green is the right color. Oh, let's try an orange. That might look good. Let's see. I have a tangerine. Let's bump this up to more of an orangey color. And that's the nice thing about live color. That looks cool. So we'll do that and we'll turn that into global like that. So there's a lot of different things you can do and I might explore how to turn this into a T I'm probably, I am going to turn it into a t-shirt design because I would like to have this on a t-shirt without any text because this is the type of image somebody would look at and go, what does that mean? I go, I don't know. 
I go, you tell me what you think it means, because that's always fun to get people's opinion on stuff like that. So um, most of my designs like this, I turn into either stickers or T-shirts. And I love using CottonBureau.com for T-shirts. They do an excellent job digitally printing them. I have a whole closet full of T-shirt designs I've done and printed through them because... Um, it, the, it, the quality is really great and it wears really good too. Even after washing multiple, multiple times, it holds up. So, uh, you can find a link to all the shirts and stickers on my people of process page on my website. You can find a link for that below in the description of this movie. Um, I hope this series, uh, will help you see methods you can adapt and use in building your own vector-based designs like this. It doesn't have to always be client projects. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll always answer those questions. And if you have ideas, uh, post them as a question as well, because I make a list of content people want to see. And when I can come up with a good way of addressing it, then I turn it into a new movie for this channel. So remember the exercise files for each movie in the over the shoulder vector building series is free. You don't have to pay for it. The link to download it is in the description below. Um, but a big thank you to those who have become members or subscribed to this channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Until next time, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.